All right, here we are, chapter nine, uh, lesson one on slope fields. All right, so let's quick talk about a differential equation uh, where y is an unknown function, or usually unknown. X is an independent variable, and we can take successive derivatives of y. So this would be technically the first derivative of y. All right, if I wanted the second derivative of y, which we'd call d2y dx squared, I would take the derivative of this with respect to x, which would be 1 plus dy dx. And I can go down the line with that, right? I could go d3y dx cubed, but I could simplify this. Oops. d squared y dx squared would equal 1 plus dy dx, which is x plus y. All right, the differential equation is always uh, differentiated with respect to the independent variable, and this is our dependent variable, right, y. So let's get to a couple of examples here and, and then uh, bring this back to slope fields. Okay, so uh, sometimes a first-order differential equation can be written as such. Right, if you want to find out where uh, this thing equals 0, the solutions for which this thing equals 0, Right, the solutions for this are going to be functions of y in terms of x. So let's show that y equals e to the 2x is a solution to the following. And this in, in this case is a second order differential equation. So let's find y prime, which would be the derivative of e to the 2x, which is 2e to the 2x. And then the second derivative, which would be uh, 4 times e to the 2x. And then let's plug it into our differential equation. So we get our second derivative, which is 4e to the 2x, minus 3 of our first derivatives, which is 2e to the 2x times 3, plus 2 of our original function, y equals e to the 2x. And it says that y equals e to the 2x is a solution to the differential equation equal to 0. So I see I have 4e to the 2x and 2e to the 2x, which is 6e to the 2x. And this piece right here gives me a negative 6e to the 2x. And therefore, we can see that clearly this would be a solution. Uh, this is just an abstract version of what we're about to do with differential equations this chapter, but it's a really good lead-in to this chapter. All right, so let's talk about slope fields and patterns. All right, so I'm going to fill out this table. You can do the same. We're defining our derivative of this function, whatever it is, this family of functions, using x plus y. So why don't you fill out the table above, and we'll come back and talk about it. All right, so what I did was I just took each of my x and y values, and I added them, as I'm told to right here. And I came up with the following values. Be careful. I, I kind of, at this point, I kind of reset it and went back to x equals negative 3. Now let's plot these. Okay, so at negative 3, 1, I have a slope of negative 2. Negative 2, 1, slope of 1. Then a slope of 0. These aren't perfect, obviously. Then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. All right, then I got myself at negative 2, negative, or negative 3, negative 2, I got a slope of 1. Negative 1, excuse me. Notice that this negative 1 happens both here and here. So you start to see a pattern. What you'll see is that that negative 1 will happen everywhere everywhere with symmetry right there. Okay, And then let's go negative 2. Negative 2 is 0. So you see zeros. They start to show. OK, and then you get, uh, what is it? Negative 1, negative 2, or negative 1, positive 2 is a 1. So you see slopes of 1. Those start showing up. And you can kind of fill in your, your values from there. So here I'd get a slope of 2, and a slope of 3, and a slope of 4, etc. So let's talk about um, this family of slopes now. So I filled out a few more uh, pieces to my slope field so that you could see that this family of functions right, is dependent on where it originates. Right, so this point, for example, 0, 1, would form an equation of a function, right, a graph of a function that looks like it'd probably follow that pattern. 
Okay, and then let's say that we had a different origination point, like for example, uh, I don't know, zero negative one. Well, that's going to create, oops, let's go zero negative two. That's going to create a different function, right, that'll kind of take on a different form, but it would have the same derivative, right? It would follow the same pattern for dy dx. So all that slope fields do is they give you a generic uh, kind of graph of the flow of your potential uh, functions that would give you that derivative, okay? And it all depends on their what we call their initial condition. This is what we call their initial condition. And it kind of sets it in motion. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about slope fields and fill a few out. All right, so I think I want to go to number two here in the homework. And I'm going to consult this for a moment. And I'm going to think about if the slope is always twice whatever y is, the slope at y equals 0 will always be 0. Okay, so there's my slopes for each of those values of x, or of y. All right, if my y value is 1, then my slope would be 2. If my y value is 2, my slope would be 4. I'll try my best to do this pretty accurately. Now let's talk about the other end of things. What if y is negative 1, my slope would be negative 2. And if y was negative 2, my slope would be negative 4. So in this one especially, there's a lot of symmetry. If I had an initial condition of, say, I don't know, 2... 2, negative 1, you could sketch the graph of that to look something like this. I think that would be a good representation of that initial condition. All right, let's try another. Uh, let's take negative y over x. Well, first of all, where would the slopes be undefined? Right, the slopes would be undefined where x would be 0. So I'm not going to put anything where x equals 0. Right. Where would the slope be negative uh, 1? Well, the slope would be negative 1 where y and x are the same. So here and here. What would the slope be at negative 1, negative 1? Well, it would be the same, right? Because those would cancel and that would be... So I'd get a slope of negative 1 along there. All right. So now if you think about, well, when y is 0... As long as x isn't 0, our slope would be 0. So when y is 0, we'd have a slope of 0. Okay, what about when y and x are opposite side, but they're the same? I'm going to get something like this. Okay, one, one, 1, negative 1, or 2, negative 2, etc. Okay, now let's work our way around a little bit. Let's go here to y equals 1 and x equals 2. Well, that'd be a negative 1 half. That'd be a negative 1 half right there. What about when y equals 2 and x equals 1? Well, now I'd have a slope of 2. Or a negative 2, I'm sorry. So you can see, I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. Let's try that again. So you can see a bit of symmetry there. Now this would be a slope out here of one-third. This would be a slope out here of, actually using negative one-third, and that would be a slope of negative two-thirds. So you can see the symmetry that's going on here. I'll let you kind of finish up the rest, but I'll, I'll do one more point. Let's do one more point down here. Okay, let's do that point. That point is uh, 3, negative 2. 3, negative 2. So how would I find dy dx if I wanted to do it algebraically? Well, I'd take y, which is negative 2, put it over x, which is 3, and then make that negative. So those would cancel, and I'd get a slope of 2 thirds, which makes sense, right? The slope up here was negative 2 thirds, and the slope down here is positive two-thirds. So there's a symmetry going on here. Um, if I were to take a quick guess, this would be a slope of one-third. Uh, this would be a slope of one-half. 
and you can see what's happening there. Okay, this this right here would be a slope of two. And of course now I have the first and the fourth quadrant complete. If this were my initial condition right here, I would say that the the general or the uh, particular equation that would fit that would look something like that. All right, let's keep moving. All right, let's do a little bit of matching. Um, if I look at number seven, uh, the slope of y equals one is zero everywhere. Uh, it's zero everywhere, and the only place I see uh, a graph of a differential or of a slope field where the slope is zero everywhere is right there. Okay, cool. Now, what would the slope on y equals x be everywhere? Well, it'd be one. And look at that. I've got a slope field that has slopes of one everywhere. Okay, uh, how about y equals x squared? Well, the slope there, y prime would equal 2x everywhere. So I'd have a slope of either 2, 0, or negative 2. When would it be 0? It would be 0 when x equals 0. So check this out. When x equals 0, I get 0 everywhere. All right, I want to skip ahead real quick. I want to go to natural log of x. So the natural log of x, what would the slope of that be? Well, if you just look, generally speaking, at the graph itself, right, at each of these graphs, which one looks to follow uh, the natural log of x? Well, I know the natural log of x is undefined at uh, x equals 0, so that kind of targets a and g to me. Okay, and g looks like it takes on the form of the natural log of x. Uh, therefore, I would go with g. All right, so let's go back here to 12 and to 13. Okay, cosine of x, right? The derivative of cosine of x at 0, if you just looked at cosine of x, all right, when x is 0, what would be the slope there? Well, the slope there is 0. Therefore, I look for when x is 0, I want the slope to be 0. So the two I'm targeting here are sinusoidal. When x is 0, that is not a slope of 0. When x is 0, it looks like these slopes are all 0. So I would go with b for cosine. And so therefore, of course, I know that sine has a slope of 1. Right? Sine has a slope of 1 at x equals 0. Right here, that's a slope of 1. And I see that slope of 1 showing up, so that would be e. So now all I really want to do is I want to isolate which of these graphs is uh, a cubic and which is a quadrat, well, which is a rational 1 over x squared. Okay, so um, it might be pretty easy for you now to identify uh, where we're at for the cubic. Uh, as you look at f, you can see that the slopes on the left side are negative, and on a cubic, you know, our, our uh, end behavior looks like such. So this would have to be f, and of course that would isolate a as 1 over x squared. Okay, that's a really good practice with identifying given a function, identifying its slope field. All right, let's do this one as well. This has got some good stuff. Um, the things that like kind of jump out at me are where the slopes are equal to 0. All right, so if you look at these values here, the slopes are equal to 0 here. And the cool thing about this is these values are where x and y are equal. Um, and when x and y are equal, uh, the only function that I see here for the derivative uh, would be the following right now now we're identifying a slope field from a derivative and so if I want the derivative to equal zero I want x and y to be equal so therefore I, this would be C okay um, the next thing that I see that's um, you know I'm just looking for where the derivative is zero well the derivative is zero here where x equals negative two if I were to plug in a negative two into each of these um, uh, derivatives or differential equations, the only one where that would always make the derivative equal to 0 would be here, 15. So that would be b. All right, and then uh, from there, um, I see slopes of 0 when y equals 0. So that means y equals 0 makes the slope 0. That clearly has to be 16 here. And so then that leaves us with uh, the last one. 
of course, I would probably, um, instead of just saying, well, I know now that that's got to be it by process of elimination, I would look to see where the slope is zero. And the slope is zero and x is zero, which makes total sense there. When x is zero, that um, quantity would always be zero, regardless of if it's negative. Um, of course, there's one spot where I shouldn't have that slope zero, which is there because it would be undefined. Okay? And so therefore, um, I would put a there and we'd be good to go. Okay, let's do a couple more here, talking about initial condition. Uh, we've graphed the um, slope field here for, uh, it looks like dy dx equals x times y. It says the solution curve passes through the point zero, 01, given, right? We see that right here. So it says sketch the solution curve for the point zero, 02. Okay, that's pretty easy. Zero, 02 looks like it'd probably follow the same thing. It's in that same family of functions. It's just raised up a couple of units. Um, and then sketch the solution curve through the point zero, negative one. Well, clearly that would go the opposite direction. And there you go. Okay, uh, we did this one earlier, but if I look at the differential equation slope field for uh, x plus y, and I go to zero, one, here looks like a nice little solution curve there. And if I went negative three, zero out here, it looks like that would be the solution curve there. Okay, uh, looks like some kind of population differential equation here. I'm going to do a couple of initial condition uh, sketches and see what they look like. Uh, I'm not going to do the 650. That's going to be a little too close to 600. So let's go 0, 200. Okay, that would look something like this. Looks like there's a asymptote of sorts there. 0, 400. Eventually the same. Uh, with a different initial condition, 0, 600, and 0, 800. It looks like that will decay and come down there. Perfect. Those are solution curves. Let's do another solution curve uh, on this slope field. Looks like that asymptote is just located in a different position now. So I'm like, I'll do 0, 0, I guess. Uh, 0, 50. Let's go 0, 200. And 0, 0,250. So 0, 0. That's not going to change, right? Um, you might, you might, you might see a little bit of this, maybe. Um, but it's hard for a population to grow if there's nothing to start with. So I would probably err on the side of caution there. All right, 0, 0,50. Uh, it's going to do something like this. All right, uh, 0, 0,200. It's going to just creep along there, and 0, 0,250 would be kind of like that. All right, that is uh, Intro to Differential Equations and Slope Fields.